In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make sure that you anonymize the results of your filters within your Power BI reports. We're going to go through how you can hide the results if the result is too few. And we're also going to look at how you can effectively give an error message to let your users know that there is this anonymity feature. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Keeping your data anonymous is a common requirement that allows your data to be analyzed without compromising, let's say, people's identity. It's commonly seen in survey result reports like employment survey or customer surveys. And while Power BI being so flexible comes at a cost of potentially allowing your users to interact with their report and find identities or details if they know which filters to use. So let me show you how they can potentially do that and how we can fix it. So here's a set of data that we're going to use for our demo for today. It's a simple Excel file with three sheets. We have a list of employees that we have for our fictional company. We have some details here that we're going to use for filtering purposes like job title, department, or gender. We have the list of questions that we are giving to our organization as part of our employment survey. It's just a simple employee satisfaction survey with some basic questions. And then we have every single employee's individual responses, employee one, as well as what their rating was for that survey, ranging from one to five. We're gonna look at importing this data into Power BI to visualize them as charts. So let's go through that now. So first we're gonna go to Power BI here and get data from Excel. We're gonna open up this Excel survey. We have a few tables here. We're just going to import uh, the responses as well as the employees table right here. Transform data. This will just open up Power Query. I'm just going to double check and make sure that everything is OK here in our Power Query. So I'm going to change all of the data types into what they need to be rename this one as employees. The same thing here, detect data type, and we'll just name this one responses. Let's load this data as it is, and let's start making some visuals. Let's just make sure that there is a relationship between these two. Yeah, that seems to be fine. Actually, it needs to be the ID of the employee related to the responses. So that should be OK now. So let's try to visualize these uh, questions into a chart. So we'll take a question. And we'll put this in a bar chart, something like this. And then what we'll do is we will drag then the response. And instead of summing it up, we'll average it just to give us a good idea of what the average responses were for each of those uh, questions. I'm going to just add the data label there. Just make sure that this is a whole number that we're visualizing. And there you go. So for the whole business, you can see what the average responses were for each of these questions across your whole organization. Now, obviously, with Power BI, you're able to slice and dice this to see what the response rates were, or rather what the results were for different parts of your company. So let's add a few slicers here just so that we can uh, see that in action. I'm just going to add a uh, drop down here for department. I'll add another one for 
uh, let's just say gender for now. So adding these two slicers, let's see if I change it to accounting, you'll see that it gives us the average uh, response for the accounting department. For business development is different, engineering is different as well. So it gives you the average for each of those questions. And I think it would be also beneficial if we show the average across the whole, uh, whatever we have filtered. So I'm gonna do average. And I'm gonna create another visual here just to count the number of employees in our current context. So distinct count. So we have 88 in engineering and the average response is 2.97. And these are the averages across all the different questions. So if we change that, it gives you a different result. Now with this setup, you can see that you can use the filters to filter the data by department and essentially analyze where the problem lies. However, let's say I'm Joe Bloggs working for this company and I have access to this report. Now, having this report as it is now, it seems pretty anonymized. However, let's say I want to see what my colleagues have answered in this survey. I know that my colleague works in accounting and he's the only by gender person in that department. So although this doesn't have any name values here, you'll, you'll see where the problem is in a second. So I'm gonna choose accounting and I'm gonna choose by gender here. So here you go. So this is where the problem lies. You can see that me as a user, I'm able to filter this data down into what I want. So essentially, as long as I know what to filter in this report, I'm able to get individual responses regardless if there is a name on the report or not. So we want to essentially make sure that we avoid things like this to make sure that people aren't privy to information that they're not meant to know. So how would we do this? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the results don't get exposed based on certain parameters, like if it's less than a certain number of people as a result. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start by creating a new measure right here. I'm going to name this one uh, count of results. And then we're just going to say distinct count of employees. Now what it does is essentially the same thing as what this does. So it just makes sure or well, first of all, we're just counting the number of employees and you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So from here, we're going to convert this into getting the average response result, which is going to be essentially what we're going to be using in our visuals instead. So I'm going to just put this in our clipboard. So I can just potentially just highlight it like this. Uh, and then we'll just rename this as response result like this. And then we're going to say, give me the average of the response So now it gives us a number, which is the same as the average there. We're just gonna make sure that this value is a single digit result. So I'm gonna convert this into an integer, but it is recognized as a whole number anyway. So we're just gonna do that. The next thing is we're gonna wrap this with an if statement to make sure we're only showing this value if the result reaches a certain threshold. So let's say um, if there are more than three employees, within the results, we should show this value. Else, we should show nothing. So I'm gonna paste the distinct that we've just done. And I'm gonna say, if it's greater than three, do this calculation. Otherwise, I want you to return blank. So what it will do is it will give us a blank like this. Actually, maybe it's better that we show it as like this, as in nothing to show in this value. So as you can see, because we have one employee in this filter, there's nothing that's being shown here, even though there is a response that is given. However, if you remove that filter from the gender, now we have more than three employees, which allows us to see 
what the results are. So what we need to make sure now is to apply this uh, or use this measure across all the visuals where we want to have the anonymity feature applied to. So in this case, we're gonna replace this one with the response result. And in our bar chart as well, we're gonna replace instead of using the response, we'll use the measure instead like this. So now what you'll notice is if I go to get by gender once more, you will see that the charts will show no values. If you want the number of responses uh, dynamic, so for example, you want instead of three, you want to be able to determine later what is a, a good value here. You can hook it up to a parameter and you can adjust it higher or lower based on your preference, but we won't go through that today. When your users get a blank result like this, they'd assume there is no data in that specific area of your report, but that's not always the case. It may be an anonymity feature that you've applied. So instead of nothing, we should try to show something else to let our users know that the filtering doesn't have a problem, but rather it's an anonymity feature that we have created. So we want to create a message to pop up to give that error message. So to start with that message, I'm going to create a new measure. I'm going to say, I'm going to name this one error message. And I'm going to say if the response result is equals to blank, uh, error, uh, too few results. Please try again. So this is the error message that we want to show them. If the response result is below the number of threshold that we've decided, so in this case, less than, less than three. And the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that, uh, because as you can see, we, if I remove that, you will still get some values here, which actually you can just change here by giving this an L statement, just say that it's like this. So you want to put this on top of your visuals um, so that it, but you want it to only show if there is no value based on the anonymity um, logic that we've created. Now we want it to be over the visual. So we actually want to have the background to go invisible when there are no errors. But if there is, we want this, this to show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one last measure here and we're going to show error show. I'm going to start an if statement once more using the same logic as before. So if the response result is equals to blank like this, then we want to use the color white. Else we want to use this hex code. So it's the hash F, F six times and two zeros. So this is the hex decimal code for transparent. So this makes sure that when you uh, set this as a conditional formatting for a specific uh, value, it will make that instead of a solid color will be transparent. So you'll see what I mean when I change and go back here. So instead of having white as a background should be here, we'll click the conditional formatting icon next to it and say we want to base the background on the value in our measure. If you hit OK. And let's just make sure we hide the category label there. And there we go. So it's blank right now because obviously we have more than three people in our result. But if we change that, you'll see that you'll get that message. Now you might want to play around with it a little bit. So maybe make it a little bit smaller or maybe making it red to make it more prominent. And what's great about this is that you can, now that you've made this, you can use this across all of your visuals that use this anonymity measure. So if you want it to be put on top of the card up there, just copy and paste like this. So now when you make filters, 
There we go. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to anonymize the results of your filters in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I'm to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.